Okay, so this is the second video for section 6.4, the quadratic formula. In the first video, I showed you a proof of this, the quadratic formula. This is a generalized formula that will solve for our x-intercepts if the parabola is given to us in standard form. So if it's given to us in ax squared plus bx plus c, and if that is set equal to 0, we can solve for the x-intercepts by plugging in our values for a, b, and c into this equation. It'll tell us our x-intercepts. Okay. So in this video, I'm just going to show us how we use this formula now. Okay. There's when we use this formula, there's three possible scenarios. Okay. The first scenario is that when we solve, we'll get two roots. Okay. So we'll get two x-intercepts. So let's do an example where that happens. Oh, and our one is spinning out of control for example one. Okay. Okay. So using the quadratic formula, find the x-intercepts um, using the quadratic formula instead of factoring. Okay. I wouldn't even know how to factor this one. We need to find two numbers of a product of negative nine and a sum of two. I can't think of any. Okay, so we wouldn't be able to factor this one, but we can now use the quadratic formula to solve for the x-intercepts. Okay, so my a value is one. I don't. Oh, that's a bad one. Looks like I crossed it with the x. Okay, so there's a one in front of here. If you don't see a number in front of the x squared, there's an invisible one. So my a value is one. My b value is 2, and my c value is negative 9. Okay? All I do is plug in these numbers in for the corresponding letter into the quadratic formula. Okay? So I will get x equals negative b, okay? my b value is 2, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared of 2 squared minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is negative 9. Okay, just plug everything in. All of this is all over 2a, so 2 times 1. Now all we have to do is just a little bit of arithmetic. Okay, so what we're going to do first, so this is a, oh, make sure you can tell that's a negative 2, I'm just going to rewrite that, x equals negative 2, plus or minus the square root. Okay? I can do exponents first. 2 squared is 4. Minus 4 times 1. Okay, So what's the product of 4 times 1 times negative 9? 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. So I'm going to have 4 minus negative 36. Okay? When I have two minuses beside each other, we know those change to a positive. So I have 4 plus 36, okay, inside the brackets. I mean, sorry, under the radical sign. 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, now I can simplify 4 plus 36. I know what that is. That's just 40. And this is all over 2. Okay, now what I have to do, I have to consider I'll do this in a different color. Okay, I have to consider the positive and negative square root of 40. Okay, so I'm going to break this into two parts. Okay, so I'll just put a little division line through here. I'm going to consider the positive square root of 40. So if x equals negative 2 plus the square root of 40 over 2, that's one of my x-intercepts. And then my other one is if I consider the negative square root of 40, okay, over 2. So if I left my answer like this, these are my exact roots, my exact x-intercepts, okay? If I want my approximate x-intercepts in a decimal form, okay, so you can just make a note, um, these are, I'll do it in blue, this is the exact root, okay? Exact roots. These are your exact roots, okay? But lots of the time, especially when we're doing application questions, okay, we're going to want our approximate roots. So let's go ahead and find our approximate roots by actually finding the value of negative 2 plus square root of 40 divided by 2, okay? We'll let our calculator do the work for that. 
So if we want the approximate roots, okay, so I'll do that underneath here. So negative, so I'm x equals negative 2 plus root 40 over 2. If I plug that in on my calculator, so if I do negative 2 plus the square root of 40, find my answer for that, and then divide that by 2, 2.16. That's my approximate root. x equals 2.16. There's one root. There's one x-intercept. And then my other one, I have to do negative 2 minus root 40 to consider my other x-intercept. Okay, Plug that in on my calculator. So negative 2 minus square root of 40 divided by 2. And I get negative 4.16. Negative 4.16. So there's my other root. So those are my two x-intercepts. I was able to find them using the quadratic formula. Those are my x-intercepts. Those are my approximate x-intercepts. If the question asks you just for the, the exact ones, the exact roots, you could leave them in this form. Okay? Now let's consider um, the second scenario, okay, where if we solve it and there's only one solution. Okay, well, let's first make a connection with vertex form and a problem with one root. Okay, if we remember vertex form, it's y equals a x minus h squared plus k. That's vertex form. So if you notice I'm given this equation, this looks like vertex form, except there's no k value. So k is zero. We know our vertex is hk, which in this case um, is 3, 0. 3, 0. There is no k value, it's 0. Okay? So if the vertex is on the x axis, so the vertex in this case is right 1, 2. The vertex is on the x axis, a value is positive, so it opens up, so it looks something like this. Okay? So you'll notice how many roots does this parabola have? How many times does it go through the x axis? Well, in fact, it actually never goes through. It, it just touches the x-axis at one point. So this just has one root. Okay? And what that root is, is the vertex. The root is at 3, 0. Okay? So the root is x equals 3. I'll use that line I made by accident. The root is x equals 3. Okay? So... What I want you to take away from this, if a parabola only has one solution, that solution, that root, is the vertex. Okay? So, for example, if the solution is x equals 4, the vertex is on the x-axis at 4. Okay? So, let's put this plan into action here. So, use the quadratic formula to solve this. One thing I'll notice about this one is that it has not been set equal to 0. So, we have to do that. Let's move the 9 to the other side. It becomes positive, and I have nothing left on the left side now, so this is now set equal to zero. So I have my a value, my b value, and my c value. My a is four, my b is negative 12, and my c is nine. Plug those all into the quadratic formula. I get x equals negative b, so negative negative 12, I'm not going to write it like that, though. Negative, negative 12 is a positive 12. Okay? So, x equals negative b. So, negative, negative 12 is just positive 12. Plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared. Minus 4 times a times c. Okay? This is all over... 2a, 2 times 4. If I go ahead and start simplifying, okay, if I do under the radical first, negative 12 squared is 144, minus 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 9 is in fact 144. Okay, 
2 times 4 is 8. So now, um, if I simplify under the radical, 12 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 8. 144 minus 144 is 0. Square root of 0 is just 0. So my x-intercept, I don't have a plus or a minus to consider, okay, because my square root is just 0. So my x-intercept is just, you know, 12 over 8. So all that is is just 1 and a half. Okay, so my x-intercept, okay, um, is just 3 over 2, okay, or I'm going to write that as 1.5. That's my x-intercept. That's my only solution for this quadratic. And what that means is that this is the vertex, okay? The vertex, what is the vertex? Because it only has one solution, it just touches the x-axis at 1.5. So my vertex is 1.5, 0. Okay, so if your value under the square root goes to zero, you're only going to have one solution. Now let's look at quadratics, the third scenario where we have no roots, okay, and the quadratic never goes through the x-axis. Okay, it's either above and opens up, or it's below and opens down, okay? So let's make a connection to vertex form first. So if I give you this equation of the quadratic, Okay. The vertex is hk, which is 2, 3. The direction of opening is up because we have an a value of 1, which is positive, so it opens up. So I have, there's my vertex, it opens up. This parabola is never going to touch this x-axis. Okay. Um, so will it ever cross the x-axis? No. If we try and solve using the quadratic formula, what will we get? Well, let's find out. Okay. So here's our quadratic in standard form. Oh, nice. It's already set equal to 0 for us. Okay, so we don't have to um, do anything to get it to equal 0 because it's already set equal to 0 for us. Our a value is negative 5. b is 8. c is negative 10. Plug all that into our quadratic formula. x equals negative b, negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared of 8 squared minus 4 times negative 5, so 4 times a, times c, which is negative 10. Okay? And this is all over 2a, 2 times negative 5. So x equals negative 8, plus or minus the square root, 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times, well, let me actually, order of multiplication doesn't matter. I'm going to do the 5 times 10 first. So negative 5 times negative 10, okay, is 50. Negative times negative is positive. 5 times 10 is 50. 50 times 4 is 200. So minus 200. All over 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Okay, now what you'll see happens, x equals negative 8 plus or minus 64 minus 200 Okay, that's negative 136 over negative 10. So if we try and use our calculator to try and get our approximate roots here, before I put all this in, I just want, what's the value of the square root of negative 136? I've never seen a negative under square root, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Square root of negative 136. Let's see. Error. No, it's, it, there's no real answer for that. Okay, so because of, because of this right here, this negative under the square root, that doesn't let us calculate any x-intercepts. Okay, so therefore, there are no roots. No roots, no solutions, no x-intercepts, say whatever you want. All of those mean the same thing. Okay, so if under the square root sign, after you simplify, you get a negative, there are no x-intercepts, there are no roots, there are no solutions, okay? So, interpreting solutions, do all problems have two x-intercepts? No, we saw three different scenarios. They could have two, one, or none. How do we determine, just by looking at our equation, how many x-intercepts a problem might have? 
Well, we look at the discriminant. The discriminant is what's under the square root sign, this b squared minus 4ac. Okay? So this right here, right here. If b squared minus 4ac gives us a positive answer, like in our first example, um, like this right here, um, one root. Oh, here it is. Okay, like this one right here with our spinning one under control. If it gives us a positive value under the square root, that resulted in two solutions. Okay? So if b squared minus square root is greater than zero, that gives us two solutions. If b squared minus square root equals zero, as in our second example. So like this one here, okay, under the square root, the b squared minus 4ac went to zero, and we only got one solution, okay? So one solution, if b squared minus 4ac, so if our discriminant is zero, there's one solution. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, like this last example where we did, where it was a negative, we know there are no solutions. Okay? So that's it for using the quadratic formula. Next lesson, we'll learn how to state, take it a step further and graph it. Um, but other than that, um, if you have any questions, um, just let me know. Um, this is what we learned. We learned how to use the quadratic formula. We learned it can have zero, one, or two solutions. Um, if it has one solution, that root is the vertex. And just by looking at the quadratic that's in standard form, you can tell how many solutions it's going to have if you look at the discriminant. If you do b squared minus 4ac, um, you can tell how many roots it'll have. Okay. If um, b squared minus 4ac is positive, you get 2. If it equals 0, you get 1. And if it's negative, you get no solutions, because you can't take the square root of a negative number. And the b squared minus 4ac is what is under the square root sign right here. Okay? And that's it.